Hi everyone, I'm Tony E with Network Collective and welcome to part two of our video series. In this video, I'm going to show you how to give your images from an EVNG lab running in Google Cloud access to the internet. Before we get started, I want to give you a mild warning. In order to make this happen, we are going to need to make some changes to the Linux operating system that EVNG runs on top of. Making some of these changes, if not done correctly, could cause you problems and you may have to redeploy your VM. Before making these changes, you should feel comfortable at the Linux command line and understand the impact of the changes you are making. Now, to give your images from an EVNG lab access to the internet, we need to turn your EVNG VM into a router. And to do this, you'll need to follow three simple steps. We need to assign an IP address and then restart networking to get that IP address to take on the interface. We need to turn on IPv4 forwarding. This enables the EVNG VM to forward IP traffic for destinations it doesn't know. And we need to create an outbound NAT rule for traffic leaving the EVNG VM for a management subnet that we're going to define. Now, before I show you these steps in action, let's briefly go over how this works. All right, here we are in my whiteboard. I'm going to try and describe what this looks like under the hood, starting from the internet on the left side and working our way into the VM. When we deployed our VM, if you remember from the console, it gave us an internal and external IP address. Our external IP address lives out here on the edge of our VPC, and our internal IP address actually lives on the PNet0 interface. These are actually bridge interfaces. And what this does is this actually sort of takes your physical interface. In this case, it's a VM, so it's a logical interface, but it's still treated as a physical. And it bridges that into the VM itself. So the IP address actually lives right here on this guy. Now we can open up the config and take a look and verify that's the case. The reason we have all of these interfaces is if you were deploying EVNG on a physical server that had multiple NICs on it, what you would be able to do is actually connect those NICs uh, to the bridge interfaces and allow you to actually bridge to the internal lab network that you can connect your devices to. Now these PNet0 interfaces all the way up through 9 actually correlate to the cloud interfaces in EVNG. What we're going to do is introduce Cloud1 to our lab topology. And we're going to connect the management interfaces of our Palo Alto firewall, our Cisco ASA, and a virtual PC. And we're going to use those to test the internet connectivity. Now let's use this drawing to actually describe how the traffic gets out to the internet. Whether we're coming from the Palo Alto, the Cisco ASA, or the virtual PC, we're going to go ahead and just use ping as our source traffic, and we're going to ping 8.8.8.8. That's actually going to bridge to PNet1. I'm going to create an IP address on PNet1, and all of these devices are going to reside in this subnet. It's going to be a slash 24. This is going to act as their default gateway. For here, it's going to get routed to this interface and actually going to be taken to their default gateway, which is going to be the 10.150.0.1 of the Google Cloud VPC, and it's going to get routed out to the internet from there. Now, let's bring up our SSH console and dive right in. OK, here we are at the Linux command line on our EVNG VM. I'm logged in as root. Now remember our first step, we need to assign an IP address and restart networking. First, let's take a look at our interfaces file. Now our Cloud1 interface, the one that we're going to use for internet connectivity, is right here, PNet1. And there's just a couple of values we need to change here. We need to change this from manual to static, and then we need to, we need to define our address, our IP address, and the subnet mask. And we'll put that in this stanza right underneath iFace PNet1. So let's open this file and input our data. Here we are. We're going to change our uh, bridge interface to static. And we want to give ourselves a, an IP address and a subnet mask that is going to give us a management subnet. Now, this is a management subnet that is going to be able to live in our EVNG VM for as long as we want it to, unless we come in this file and change it again. This allows us to use this uh, cloud number one for any number of labs and connect the management interfaces of any number of VMs to it. For me, I like to assign uh, an address space that I won't use anywhere else in any part of my topologies, whatever you're comfortable with. In this case, I'm just going to use 10.199.199.1. .1. 
and I'm going to give myself a slash 24 to play with. That'll allow me to connect up to 255 management interfaces uh, to this bridge interface. So that's it. I'll press enter, control X, Y, and yes. Now we need to restart networking. And as soon as this takes, we'll be able to verify it. If we use the um, IP address command, it should be here under PNET number one. Here's PNET number one, and here's our IP address we just configured. Very good, so now we're on to step two. Step two, we need to turn on IP forwarding. And to do that, we need to uncomment a line uh, in our uh, sysctl.comp file. So let's open that file. so we can edit it out. This file tells the kernel whether or not to turn on certain features. Right now, if we scroll down, we can see that uh, the net IPv4 IP forward is commented out, which means it won't forward traffic. If it receives a packet that's not destined for itself, it discards it. What we want to do is turn this feature on so when it receives a packet that's not destined for itself, it will look up a destination in its own routing table and forward as necessary. So to uncomment it, we'll just take out the hash. We'll save this file, and then we'll tell sysctl to go ahead and read that file in with tacp, and our file is etsy uh, sysctl.conf. Uh, and it's going to ahead and read that file in with the new feature we just turned on. Now step three, we need to create an outbound NAT IP tables rule. Now this is pretty simple. It's a little bit of a long command, so it looks overwhelming at first, but it is relatively simple. Um, as root, we need to do IP tables. We want to add this to the NAT table, and we want to append this to the uh, post routing chain. I want to match source traffic that matches my subnet, the management subnet we just defined. And that's if it goes out interface uh, pnet0, I want to uh, masquerade. So to verify that went in correctly, we're going to do IP tables. TAC capital L, N, V, TAC T, NAT. And here's the rule we just put in. It's in the post routing chain in our NAT table. And here it is, masquerade all, out interface PNET zero. This is gonna be our egressing interface, the, the source interface uh, when the VM now forwards packets. Anything that comes from this subnet going to any destination. So let's go ahead and test it with a virtual PC. So let's give this virtual PC um, an IP address in that space. I'm going to give it the dot 100, give it that 24-bit mask, and assign its default gateway the dot 1. So now we should be able to ping from our virtual PC over to the PNET 1 interface, the cloud interface, the new bridge we just set up. and now we can ping to that IP address. Now let's try and ping through that box, right? Let's, make, let's verify that the routing feature has been turned on. And now I'm pinging Google. I'm pinging 8.8.8.8 uh, .8 from my virtual PC. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the other boxes on, give them their IP addresses, and do the same ping test. All right, here's the IP address I configured for my Cisco ASA. It should have a default gateway. That points to the dot one, going out the management interface. And let's see if we can ping 8.8.8.8. .8 Very good. All right, and here we are on the Palo Alto VM. If we show our management interfaces, we can see the IP address I've configured, the dot five, and the default gateway <clears throat> is the dot one. We should be able to ping uh, our local gateway. Very good, and this would lead me to believe we could probably ping quad eight. Very good. 
All right, so now we've tested reachability with our three VMs. By following the three steps of assign an IP address, turn on IPv4 forwarding, and creating an outbound NAT address, we can now add any number of images that we want to in our topology, connect a management interface to it, assign it a static IP that's within the subnet that we defined, and give it the proper default gateway, and now it should be able to reach out to the internet. Now we can do things like start assigning a DNS server, to our images so that they can do named lookup if we want to ping things by their fully qualified domain name. Now in part three, I'll show you how to connect to these devices as if they were locally connected to your local LAN from your laptop or workstation over the internet in Google Cloud Platform. Stick around.